We've been looking at uniform circular motion for quite some time. Take a seat. And we've established the important things, right? In terms of vertical motion, because we've, we've solely been dealing with horizontal circles, right? So we've got bird's eye view right now. We're looking down at this. Vertical motion, no forces acting, okay? So we don't need to worry about that here. But we have this centripetal force acting, yeah? So either in terms of your angular velocity, mr omega squared, or as we looked at this morning, more helpfully, mv squared on r. And we realize that that can be accounted from by tension in the string, or gravity, or this morning, bank tracks, right? So if we sort of elevate one part of a road, like so, at some angle, and we're heading along, this normal force, the reaction force, is pushing you toward the center, right? So you stay on the road. Now, here's the problem though. When you don't have a bank track, when you don't have a bank track, how do you do this? We already discussed that you've got like a, you know, friction on the wheels and that's good, okay? But as you'll see in a second, sometimes you don't have much friction on the wheels to count on. Example, okay, let's have a look. Now, I had to show you this because I thought, okay, not everyone can ride a bike, I can't assume this anymore. Now, as this, um, as this cyclist is rounding his corner, you can see what's going on. I know the camera's at a slight angle, but you can see what's happening. In a second, there's a shot which I'm gonna freeze that makes it really, really obvious, okay? In order to go around the turn, and to be able to do it at sufficient velocity to, you know, he's trying to go pretty fast, you can see what he's doing. Perfect. He doesn't have an embankment, right? Instead, he's banking, well, he's banking himself, actually, uh, in terms of aircraft, if you've got a plane and it's, it's like this, um, to turn from side to side, they call it banking, right? So this is the scenario that we've got, and this is what we're going to finish with. So, let's draw ourselves a fresh diagram. Let's imagine looking onto this guy, and I'm not even going to bother trying to draw a cyclist, okay? But, if we have the vertical, okay, like this, this is upright. So let's imagine this is a cyclist just cycling on a normal straight path, no problems, okay? But he's off at an angle, so he's off something like this, okay? So, <laughs> there's my cyclist, can you see? It's a, it's a cyclist, right? Now, because he is banking, because he is banking, right? Friction is no longer acting in the same way as it would if he was just upright, okay? In fact, friction is taking him this way, okay? Does that make sense? Now it's a horizontal row, it's a horizontal row. So this is the norm, the reaction force, okay? And this over here, it's F not for force, but for friction, okay? Make sense? Now, what we want is for him to bank at just the right amount, at just the right angle, such that he's going to head in, but he's not going to topple. Okay, now how do we make sure things don't topple? I want you to think back to when we had the keys on top of a flat surface. Okay. So when you look at this scenario, here's my keys. Now what makes this a stable situation? I'll get these strings out of the way. What makes this a stable situation is that friction here is acting directly onto the body. So it's not going anywhere, right? So if you were to draw the friction force here, well it's not moving, but it would be facing in this direction. The same direction as the normal, okay? In this situation, it's going in another direction because he is banking, okay? And when you add up these two forces together, in order to make it stable, you want the sum of these two forces, the resultant force, to be going, just like with the keys, right? Exactly in line with the object. Because if it's not, for instance, suppose he banked so far over that the <laughs> resultant force was not this way, but, you know, say over this way. What would happen to the cyclist? He'd fall over, right? Because his body is this way, force is acting this way, and down he goes. Okay? So what we want is for this angles to match up exactly so that the resultant force lines up exactly with the cyclist, like so. Okay? So we're gonna call that R for resultant force. I know that we were trying to avoid putting on 
forces that aren't really forces. That's the sum of two forces. But I'm putting it here so you can see it's got to line up with the cyclist. We might even label him as such. Okay, now, we need a bit more information on here in order to resolve the forces and see what's going on, okay? So when you had a bank track, it made sense to say, well, we'll call that angle theta. That's the most sensible place to put it. That's the um, inclination from the horizontal, okay? Now, where do you think would be the most sensible place to put an angle on this diagram? Let me label some things. Uh, let's call this A, B, C, D. So now we've got a coordinate system. Which angle would you name? Which angle do you think is the most appropriate to say, here's an angle that represents how far I'm banked, how far I'm inclined? What do you think? D, D, B, which? DBA? Who reckons DBA or ABD? Well, quite a few of you, okay? Now, hands down. Obviously, you can see I can define any angle I like. I think ABD is a good choice, though. It is a good choice, okay? So I'm going to put theta here. The reason why I think it's a good choice is because what's the normal situation, the regular situation? You're cycling along and you are upright. So you would say I'm at zero degrees. That's my normal situation. Just like here, what's the normal situation of a road? Answer? Horizontal, right? So here theta is, how much am I changed from the horizontal? But because we're talking about a cyclist who's usually vertical, right? The change is measured from the vertical. Okay? So far, so good. So let's try and resolve the forces here and see what's going on. Okay? Um, if I've got theta over here, I can join up some um, right angle triangles here. Okay, so I've got right angle triangle here, right angle triangle here, and there's theta. So the two forces that I'm interested in, right? F, magnitude along that way, and magnitude up that way, okay? They're related by, well, if you put F up here, okay, because I've got, um, I've got opposite sides of a rectangle here, no problems, right? In relation to theta, have a look at this triangle here, ABD. Just put it out on its own, right? You've got the friction force going in that direction. You've got your normal force going in that direction, and there's theta. So what trig ratio would you choose? You'd choose tan, wouldn't you? Right? You can say tan theta, and that's equal to F over M. Okay? So that's useful because it relates these two via the angle that we've got. Okay? So now that you've done that, we've got the diagram. We've done trig and geometry. That's pretty much all there is to it. What would be your third step? Think, think back to the conical pendulum. We want to resolve, right? Horizontally, vertically, okay? So, horizontally, actually we'll do vertically first, because vertically is simpler. What forces are there? What forces can you see? You've just got one vertical force, N, right? And it should be, well, he's on a flat road. <laughs> we don't want him to be bumping up and down or digging into the ground, right? So you've got that force exactly equal and opposite to gravity, right? So in fact, we really should put that here. So that's what's happening vertically. Okay. Well, what about horizontally? This is a little more interesting. What's the only force that's acting horizontally in this case? It's the centripetal force, which in this case is just owing to friction, right? Because it's banking over and friction is going that way. So the friction should be equal to now. We're talking about a, a cyclist, right? So is he likely to think in terms of radians per second? Probably not, right? So therefore we'll go with mv squared on r. All good? Okay, so can you see how I can put one, two, three together? How would you do it? What would be a nice, neat way of putting them together? We can do some division, right? What would you divide by? I've got F over N here, right? And I've got F here and N here. So I'm going to go 3 on 2. I think that's the way that I would do it, okay? Because that will let me bring tan into it, okay? So that gives me on the left-hand side F over N. What does it give you on the right-hand side? V squared on RG. So far, so good. So you're getting this, tan theta from equation 1. Now, does this look familiar? This should look familiar. This is almost exactly the same as what we saw with a bank track, right? 
shouldn't surprise us because what the cyclist is trying to do is mimic this situation, except he just doesn't have a bank. He's making it in his body, okay? So what I really want is the angle. Theta equals, so I've got tan inverse. There you go. Okay. So that's, that's how I find the angle of inclination away from the vertical based on how fast I'm going and what's the corner that I have to go around. How big is it or how small is it? Okay. 